Campbell, your, your pathway into the AFL started, you recruited from the Oakley Chargers, taken at number 32 in the 01 draft. Now, ironically, the number that you started in at the Hawks was 32. The following season, you moved to 30. What what happened there? Yeah, it's, um, well, I just got given 32. So, you know, as a, as a youngster going to the club, that's the number that uh, that I was given. And um, I went on the uh, Thailand footy trip in 2002 <laughs> with, with the boys. And yep. a young, innocent, private school Scotch boy, I... Uh, I certainly learned a few things uh, walking down the streets in in Phuket. Um, you grew up. You grew up pretty quickly, I'd imagine. Yeah, and realised how good the world was out there. Um, but uh, <laughs> Tony Woods, um, who had just retired that that year, um, yes, pulled me aside one night and and basically just said, "Look, um, I'm retiring. The, the number thirty jumper uh, is there, and um, of all the." people at the footy club I would like you know it'd be an honour if you could carry that number on and um, I had to think about it because you know, I hadn't really thought about changing numbers your first number you get is sort of um, what you think you'll always play but um, I really respected Woodsy um, yeah Schwabby, who was our coach at the time was was a former number 30 as well so yeah no that played a, a bit of a role and I um I made the swap to number 30. Um, so Schwab was a uh, coach at the time. Does that mean you were there when Alistair Clarkson came in? Certainly does. Yeah. I, I had three years under Schwabby, uh, 2002, three and four, and, uh, we underperformed in those three years. We finished ninth, ninth. And then, um, he famously sort of came out at the start of the 2004 season and, and said, I think this is the year that Hawthorne can win the premiership and, yep. um, sort of, yeah, Nothing went right that year, and we had a, a list that um, probably wasn't professional enough and, and probably internally we thought they were better than what they were. We had some players that had some injuries and things, so we ended up um, having a really bad year, finishing 15th on the ladder, so second last. Back back then there were only 16 clubs, and um, Schwabby got the sack, I think it was about round 18, and Donald McDonald was the caretaker coach for the last four weeks. And we went into the off-season in 2004, a club in disarray. Second last on the ladder, no CEO. Jason Dunster was the interim CEO, no coach. Um, I think that uh, uh, our captain, Shane Crawford, had said publicly he was, he was stepping down as the captain. So no captain. Um, we are still training out of Glenfrey Over, which was becoming you know, worse and worse by the year. It just wasn't at AFL standard, so our facilities were shit house, And we were with a few senior players that wanted out in terms of um, you know, Nathan Thompson and Johnny Hay and some of those senior guys. And we really were um, a club in disarray in a way. And um, I was in Rio de Janeiro with uh, Richie Vandenberg and Sam Mitchell, and um, we just heard online that uh, the Hawthorne senior coach was Alastair Clarkson. And while we knew the name, we sort of had to you know, look up you know, who he was, where he'd been coaching and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And we realised he'd, you know, he'd been coaching Central Districts. He was at Port Adelaide and, and he was going to be our, our senior coach when we got back come November 2004. So it was a bit of a, a whirlwind. <clears throat> It was it was a contentious decision, Campbell, wasn't it, to select Alistair Clarkson? But Jason Dunstall was the instigator. He was the guy who basically formulated Clarkson's arrival as senior coach at Hawthorne. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, he doesn't like to take too much credit for it, Bungo, but um, there's no nah. doubt he was absolutely significant in, in getting... Um, Clarko, and the, the thing is, Hawthorne had a bit of a history in appointing their own. So, yeah. um, Ken Judge was the coach before Schwabby, former Hawthorne person, Schwabby, obviously. And in the mix around that sort of time was um, Terry Wallace and uh, Gary Ayres. So, I think the footy yeah. world just assumed that one of those two you know, great players, 
you know, senior coaches would potentially take the job. And so for, for Hawthorne to break rank a little bit and go out and get an untried young guy yeah. who who wasn't a former Hawthorne person um, really was a pretty brave and bold decision. And, um, you know, history suggests it was one of the most astute decisions that the club has, has ever made. Um, Ian Dicker certainly played a role in that as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, certainly Jason Dunstall was pivotal. <clears throat> Campbell, I'm very keen to know um, how quickly things turned around at Hawthorne under Clarkson and specifically what it meant for you, your playing style and your role under Clarkson, how that may have changed, um, you know, uh, as opposed to Schwabby. Yeah, it was a funny one. The, the first thing Clarko basically did was book the whole team on a flight to Papua New Guinea and we walked the Kokoda track. And wow. um, that was significant. Yeah, that was uh, December as well. So it was their wet season. So we were sort of told that it wasn't a, a great thing to do from a, a physical perspective with malaria and things like that. But I think he just wanted to, to set a bit of an example and, and get the team all together and, and bond. Um, and we did that and it was honestly one of the best things that I've ever done. Um, there's a battlefield over there called Isharava and there's mm. four pillars and there's one word on each of the four pillars, courage, mateship, endurance and sacrifice. <clears throat> and we get told the stories around what happened there and you know, as we walk along the whole track and it's a pretty sort of moving week. Um, when we came back, you know, we, we sit around and we all talk about what it meant to us and what we want to stand for as a footy club and collectively the group just sort of came back to that night at Isharava and the four pillars and we just basically said, look, if our game can revolve around courage, mateship, endurance and sacrifice and the things that fall under that, sacrificing your role for the team, you know, endurance, pushing through, um, uh, all those things. And we had, you know, we, we would write some words under under them as well. Um, but if we can bring those four words to life week to week and um, season to season, well, that's a step forward for the footy club. And, and that really became, you know, um, our mantra as a club. I thought that was really significant first thing that he did. And he just came with a really professional focus uh, on game plan, structure, um, team rules. And he just took no no crap in terms of the discipline because while I wouldn't say that we were undisciplined, it was just the little things. Like if you're two minutes late to a team meeting, you know, it's like, oh, no worries, come in, come in. If you were five minutes late to a physio, Yet no worries, you got 15 minutes instead of 20. Uh, if you missed a massage, you know, those were considered, you know, okay. Um, and when he came, he just went bang. And if a meeting started at 8 o'clock and you were there at 8.01, well, the whole club on the day off, which was quite often a Thursday, would go down to Kerford Road and we'd jump in the water at 6 a.m., the whole club. And wow. Some, sometimes – People were late to the late session because, oh, I couldn't get a park or the alarm didn't go off or whatever. And, okay, yep, we're there the next day, which isn't a day off, at 5 a.m. And we did this, honestly, over an 18-month period 50 times. And what would happen is you'd start to get really dirty on the, the people that were continually messing up. Yep. And what it did was it, it really formed – the playing group to take greater responsibility for our actions. Um, and eventually, once we got those little things right, it's amazing. Um, we started to get the things on the field right. We trusted each other more. And we we turned into a, you know, a pretty good club quite quickly. But I mean, there's more than just that. We moved to Waverley. Um, the recruiting was good in that period when we got – you know, rough Ed Lewis and Franklin, so three significant inclusions into uh, a group that already had some good senior players anyway, Mitchell and Hodge and Bateman and Osborne and Ladson and Rob Campbell. And, you know, we got um, Crody back. And, and so, you know, we, we had the nucleus there of being a good side, but we had to get the discipline, the buy-in, the leadership and the structures right. Uh, 